What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube world? This is my channel, Barn on 11970, and my name is Chris, and thank you, as always, for taking the time to listen to what I have to say. All right, guys, this is important. More and more people are really starting to see the games. I've actually seen some comments from, from people 15, 16, 19, that are watching some of my videos and saying how they don't want to end up growing up in a police state. They don't want to see all this negativity and fear. And they actually put aside their video games and caring about what's going on. So to the younger people that are watching this, I want to say I'm so proud of you guys. I mean, I wish I knew what I know now. I wish I knew back when I was 19, 18, 15. We didn't care. We didn't know about any of this stuff. We, we played video games. We didn't have the internet. We couldn't get this information. So unless you knew somebody, it was virtually impossible. But if you notice, somebody made a point. Um, one of my subscribers, his name is 71 Other One. And one of the things he said in his statement um, in his comment section, he said, one of the things I notice in many comment sections are comments like, Jesus, please come now. Jesus is on his way. Rapture, Armageddon, things like that. Now, if you think about, because I responded to it, not only do they use how Jesus is always coming and there's going to be the rapture or the apocalypse, which, by the way, if you actually look up the word apocalypse, it actually means an unveiling. It doesn't mean what they try and teach you in the movies. But you'll also notice they're always talking, like I say, about how viruses, terrorism, maybe things like asteroids like or something like Nibiru they have been saying if you actually follow religion they have been saying that Jesus is coming they said it in the year 1000 they said it in the in in the years in 2000 1999 there was supposed to be the rapture it seems like every millennium is always on his way to rapture us the same thing with terrorism there's always a new threat around the corner and somebody's always there to get you or a virus up. Oh, there's a new virus coming to get you. There's going to be another one tomorrow and there'll probably be one six years from now or at any moment an asteroid could come and destroy the planet. They're always trying to get us with situations where one, we can't, we have no proof of anything because it's all hearsay because unless somebody actually has a photograph of them hugging Jesus we cannot say other than what we've been told if Jesus is real. So I'm sorry if that makes you mad, but everything, if you are religious and you believe in a Jesus, which you have every right to do so, if you want to believe in something, I'm not saying you shouldn't. If you want to believe in it, that's fine. But let's keep things real. You've never actually filmed yourself speaking with Jesus. You don't have video documents of Jesus sitting down talking with Oprah talking about how he can't wait to come back for his second coming. So let's keep it real. The same thing with terrorists. They're always talking to the media how there are these terrorists. But how do we know they're really as bad as they say? Based on the fact that the very people that are saying it are the ones that are in charge of what goes in and out of the media, what goes in and out of your food, what goes in and out of your education system. And also, for example, a meteor. How many of you have actually seen a meteor the size of uh, Texas or something that can destroy the planet? Have you ever seen one? I mean, you'll get plenty of people that'll talk about all these little dot images and, oh, how it's going to hit the earth and how it's going to kill you. But we're obviously still here, so it hasn't happened yet. And considering we've been here for thousands of years and for uh, civil when we were civilized, quote unquote civilized, even though there's been nothing but war and destruction and theft of the uh, people and enslavement, but yet we're civilized. But let's go back to the cavemen. We've been around for millions of years. And yet, no asteroid has come to kill us. No Nerubu. But it's always something that, oh, it's just around the corner. Because remember in 2011, we had that priest that said the rapture was going to happen sometime around April or May of that year. Then they said, oh, the calculations were wrong. It's actually going to be in November. And how many people sold everything they owned? to say that, oh, it's now the time that's coming. And I'll give you a story about that. I remember when I was probably about 19 or 20, and I was hanging out in a shopping center with a couple of my friends, and we're sitting in my car, and we're drinking, just hanging out, you know, like normal teenagers would do. 
which I don't recommend anybody doing these days. If you're a teenager, please do not drink. I mean, I wasn't driving or anything, but we were just sitting there having a good time, hanging out like kids at the time did. We hung out in like parking lots. All of a sudden we get a knock on the window and we're like, oh my God, it's the cops. We're going to be in trouble. And it ends up being some religious person. And they were talking about, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. And the rapture's coming. And at any moment, you're going to hear horns in the sky. And when you hear those horns, that's the time where everybody's going. And I remember, I don't know if I was just drunk or very impressionable at that time. Because I, I think I was like 17, actually. And I'm waiting, thinking now, wait a minute. Any moment now, there's going to be horns in the sky. And I'm going to just be picked up or not be picked up. And I was paranoid. It's all about instilling fear in people because that's what gets you controlled. And if we realize what governments throughout history have done is the few control the many by either giving them prizes, in other words, food stamps, free education, welfare, entertainment with sports, television, remember the Roman Colosseum? or through fear. In other words, we force you to do what we want or scare you into thinking if you go out there, you're going to be hurt. And we're here to save you because we're your best friend. Even though we're the ones that tax you, even though we're the ones that throw you in jail, even though we're the ones that regulate all of these drugs that we say are perfectly fine until one day they kill too many people. We have to take them off the shelves but we've already profited off of enough people and the people that are dead, we don't have to worry about them. Now, do we? And while you're at a young age and you're physically capable of working, they're going to drain everything out of you. But once you reach a certain age where you don't make the money anymore, what do they care if you live or die? But we allow this. And they use the fear of always saying, well, tomorrow's another terrorist or there's going to be another thing that's out to get you. And you're sitting there, go, please help me, save me. We have to get it through our heads that unless we become independent and unless we work with each other and realize that we have the power to do whatever we want, including doing nothing, that until we decide to unify like they do, we will always be outnumbered even though we are not outnumbered. And that's what divide and conquer is all about. You can have an army of 100,000 here that can defeat an army of a 2 million here because if you get those two million spread out and fighting in different directions, well, then you're scattering them. So you have a massive amount of people over here that are easily destroyed by the unit, the unity of the smaller people, the smaller amount of people, all geared towards the same cause. And that's why if they can't bribe you, they will scare you. If they can't scare you, They'll entertain you. And that's why there are people, even on YouTube as we speak, that will actually get money to try and discredit and humiliate people, making up accusations and lies and just totally seeing the negativity out of everything. I mean, honestly, if, if I was the bad guy that some of these people say about me, if I was supposedly some paid shill, if I was supposedly screwing people with my Oregon pyramids, if I was doing all this corrupt things, do you think the people would keep coming back and listening to me? I mean, people are not stupid. I mean, fool me once, shame on you, but fool me twice, come on. And even with my Oregon pyramids, even though people don't understand them, I've had reorders from people. As a matter of fact, thanks to some of the free advertisement I've gotten lately on YouTube from people talking about my Oregon pyramids, I went from one sale a month to about 30 sales a month. I actually sold more Oregon products in the past month due to all that lovely free advertisement that I've gotten than the past year and a half. Because the people that buy it are interested in those things. And they actually have, I've had several people reorder. So if I was creating a product to mislead people and steal from them, do you think after they bought it once, they would say, oh, you know what? This guy screwed me over. I think I'll buy again. Oh, he screwed me over again. Damn it. Let me buy from him again. I mean, really? The people out there that are here for the right reasons, I say that all the time because I know there are people that just come here because they have nothing better to do than spread hate, or at least try to spread hate. That's their job. 
that's why you see these trolls. They're united in their cause. They will all gather together and hurt a, spe a specific person. They will target, target, target. While a few people here and there come to the defense, which I appreciate, by the way. But that's how the few can dictate what the many can do. But if you take it from the extreme level of governments throughout history, and I'm not just talking about this government. If anybody thinks I am just in dissatisfaction with this government in particular, you're sadly mistaken. Because every government around the world throughout history has a repeated slavery, stealing of money, war, famine, control, genocide. This is not something new. And yet we seem to forget about these things. And we notice how our police, that I remember as a kid, I used to love waving to cops when I was a little kid. And the cops would always wave back. And he'd be so friendly. If I was walking somewhere, and I, I remember one time I was five years old, and I walked too far away from my house and I got lost. And a cop actually saw me on the side of the road crying. Came over to me, asked me if I was okay and what was wrong. Put me in his cop car and drove me home. You don't see that anymore. You will more likely have a cop arrest somebody for smoking some marijuana than they will arresting somebody who stole everything from your house. How many of you throughout your lifetime has, have, have had something stolen only for a policeman to make a report and nothing ever gets solved? How many people do you know of somebody that got arrested for smoking a plant? Now, let me tell you something. What people do in their own homes, as long as they're not infringing on the rights of others, they're perfectly fine to do it. As long as there are consenting people and they're doing it willingly, as long as they're not hurting somebody else, there's nothing wrong with it. But I don't do drugs. The last time I smoked pot, I was in, no, not high school. I was in college. I didn't do anything in high school. That was, I was in college in um, 1988. I was 17 in 1988. Because I was born November 9th, 1970, so I was the youngest of my class. Last time I smoked pot was when I was in Stonyanta. I went to Oneonta. Lasted a semester, hated it, because I actually went to college to get away from my family, and then I became homesick. Go figure. So I tried the whole pot thing. It actually, I hated it. It made me want to fall asleep. And I wanted to be like, oh, I want to go out drinking with my friends because I can go have fun and go party and go meet with a bunch of girls and, and go hook up and everything. But smoking pot made me want to fall asleep. Who the hell wants to do that? But you know what? You have the right to do that. But yet you will see these militarized police with tanks and machine guns telling you how they want to keep the public safe. And yet they are profiting off of the people. And if you ever notice... When cops are on a side of a road, they have a choice of going on the side of the road where they're going into a major city or the side of the road that's going away from the city, major city. You know where they end up most of the time? I'm sure it's just coincidentally, but they end up on the other side when people are leaving the city. Why? Because they want the drugs to go into the city and then money comes out. And when you arrest somebody on a drug bust, you confiscate what they have. What good is having a bunch of marijuana or drugs when you can have the cash coming out? So is that really protecting people when they could have stopped it from getting in, but they wait until they actually sell the drug? So, you know, God forbid if it's not made right and it actually somebody gets shot in the process of it or somebody overdoses, they don't care about that. They just want to confiscate the money and the property. Is that helping? You know, they talk about how they want to restrict gun laws. And I don't own a gun. But I think people have the right to be able to defend themselves. But yet they'll try and tell you the gun is the criminal. The gun is what kills. No, it's the person that puts it in their trigger and says, you know what? Instead of using this to defend myself or, to, or use it for hunting if somebody wanted to do that, even though I don't agree with it, but they can do that if they want to. Somebody decides to say, you know what? I'm going to point it at you and pull the trigger. You think the gun is the problem? Or the person with the mindset of saying, I want to hurt somebody else. But they'll never focus on that. And they also won't focus on the fact of all the prescription drugs, all the people from the uh, 
the Sandy Hook incident and the Batman movie theater shooting and all these other shootings and Combine and stuff, they've always had something in common. And that is every single one of them was on some form of prescription medication, government regulated prescription medication. And they won't talk about that. They'll talk about the tool. But yet millions of people will die from drunk driving accidents every year. What are they doing about that? And we allow it. We sit here and say, you know what? I'm not powerful enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not brave enough. I don't know what to say. So you know what? You can share videos like mine or other people's, or you could start making your own. Stop saying to yourself, oh, I can't do it, or I don't do it right, or I don't do it as well. Who cares? Because if you get one person to listen to you, that is one person that somebody like myself or somebody else could not have reached. And you will have made an impact. You can't make an impact if you do nothing. Because just imagine the lives that you can save. Just imagine how many people I have had, I think, since I've been doing this channel, I think three or four people tell me that I stopped them from committing suicide. So that's why I don't give really a damn or a rat's ass what these haters want to say about me and accuse me of being some paid shill and some whatever communist. I love when they call me a communist. They really should look it up because they have no clue what that is. I would be closer to an anarchist than I would be a communist because I don't believe government should be regulating as much as they do. But I would never believe in full anarchy either because we do need regulations. I mean, you should have a license to become a doctor. You know, you shouldn't just have somebody off the street say, oh yeah, I'll operate on you. So there should be regulation. So I think I got off track, but that's all right. The, the point I'm trying to make is if you don't think you're good enough at this to make videos, well, you're wrong. You're only doing a disservice to your fellow human beings if you do not help spread the word and talk about how we need to unite and how we need to better ourselves and how we need to lose the fear. I mean, look at all the attacks I get and I'm still going and they're still going to hate me for it. But I challenge any one of those that want to accuse me of stuff. I challenge every one of them to make one good video, something that is helpful to mankind. Show your face, make a productive video, teach somebody something of education about saving the planet, helping an animal, do something good, but they'll never do that because why? They don't have the ability because they're cowards. Yeah, they can hate on me. They could wish me dead. I can get phone calls like I got today from a girl that sounded like she was being tortured. And it was a lot more graphic than the one I got last week or well, two weeks ago. The girl was crying out for me to help her. And the cops won't do a damn thing. Because first of all, it's out of their jurisdiction. And second of all, because it was, she wasn't on the phone at the time, there's no way they can verify it. So in other words, they'd rather call me a liar or making up a story than to actually want to actually take the time and effort to potentially find out if either one, a girl is crazy and making up a big lie or two, actually being harmed. And there was nothing I can do. But somebody out there, if that was really happening, there are some people out there that take pride in hurting others, physically hurting other people. I'm so upset with these people. And unless we decide today is the day we start doing stuff and start speaking up, the masses are always going to be asleep. They're going to be more worried about an iPhone 6 than their own future. The kids today are more worried about the, the console wars of PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and the Wii U than actual wars that can eventually create and change their future. You can call it paranoid, you can call it crazy, but tell me throughout history, have we had wars? Have we had riots? Have we had slavery? Have we had theft? Have we had genocide? It's happened over and over and over and over and over again. And people act today like, oh, we're sophisticated. We're civilized. We have the internet. We have cell phones. We're so much better than that. Tell that to the people overseas, all those brown children that are getting bombed because they are a different religion or a different color. Tell that to a person that walks down the street and just because they may be gay, other people will want to physically hurt them. Or somebody who decides they don't want to be religious and somebody decides to go and hurt them to prove that their God is a loving God. 
It's set by example. I don't hate anyone. I dislike some people's choices, but I don't wish harm on anybody. I don't have a problem with somebody based on their skin color or their sexual preference or their governmental choices. I don't like somebody if they're evil and they want to hurt other people. I don't care if they're white. I don't care if they're black. I don't care if they're alien. I don't care if whatever. And we are so into judging people, separating people. Why do we care so much? I've even had people make videos talking about, oh, Chris is gay. Even if that was the case, which my wife would be pretty disappointed in me if that was, but even if it was the case, who cares? If I chose or you chose that that's the lifestyle you want to be in, as long as you're not hurting somebody or taking advantage of somebody else and you have consenting people that say, you know what, you have this, so do I. What is wrong with it? You want to hate people and attack people for it and use it as a slur? I mean, there are some high horses on some of these people. And I, I, I don't understand the concept of people wanting to hurt one another and getting pleasure out of it. I mean, is your life that sad? I've, I've had a hard life growing up. I've had shotguns to my head. I lived with an alcoholic since I was 10 years old. They put pornographic stuff under my bed. Do you know what that can do to a person at 10 years old? To having a drunk person hiding their, their porn and their other sexually related tools under a child's bed? And back then, you couldn't do anything. I tried to tell my parents about it. They didn't believe me. The more people hurt me, the more people took advantage, the more I wanted to take it and turn it into something good. And that still happens to this day. No matter what I say, there are going to be people out there that are going to hate me for it. Watch the thumbs down on this video. Watch it just like everyone, because I've gotten a lot of people noticing, especially new people. So... All of this publicity that I've been getting is actually bringing me more subscribers, more people actually looking for the right cause, people with their own minds that say, you know what, I came here because somebody said you're an evil, lying son of a bitch. But instead of just listening to them, because that's what children do, I have a mind of my own, I came here and listened to what you had to say, and guess what, I like what you have to say. Subscribe. Thank you. Until. The good people say enough is enough. The chains are going to get tighter and tighter until one day they are going to be so tight you cannot break free. And the only fault it will be is yours because you decided that it was not important enough to ruffle the feathers a little bit. To get yourself out of that comfortable zone. And that's why, like, when I talk about physical gold and silver, that to me is something that says, I don't want to deal in the U.S. dollar. I don't want to deal with a corrupt stock system where the few up the top profit off of the many, but throw a couple of carrots at some people so they make enough to keep their mouths shut and help the system. Well, you're making thousands or millions. They're making billions and trillions off of the people. Look at the labor in the countries throughout the world. There's a reason why our government alone sends all of our jobs overseas to China. They have suicide nets there. Do you understand what that means, suicide nets? This is the concept of the Chinese government, which, by the way, our government supposedly has a problem with Russia because, you know, they're communists. But yet we deal with China. We purchase so much from China. China owns all our debt, mostly. And yet they are more communist than the Soviet Union ever was because they were more pure communism. But we don't seem to have a problem with them. But the suicide nets are when the Chinese government says, well, the labor is so intense there and we cheat the people so much and pay them so little that the workers who have no rights and can't do anything to complain about it because there are no unions in a communist society, they decide the only way out is to jump out the windows, commit suicide. So instead of raising the wages of the people, instead of helping to train them better, instead of making better working environments, they spend money on suicide nets that surround the building so when they jump out, they don't die. There are monks that have protested what's going on there and set themselves on fire in public streets. 
And some of us got it bad because we don't have, oh, we don't have the latest Xbox. Or I, I'm just making enough to get by, so I don't want to say anything. That's what they're counting on. They're counting on you to be scared to death to say anything. Well, you know what? Until they put a gun to my head and pull the trigger, I am going to talk about this shit. And I need your help. Stop being afraid. Because otherwise, they're going to win. And the good people will be eradicated from the earth. Because let me tell you something. I am never going to pat my own back and say I'm doing a wonderful job. I'm doing what is right because it's right. And I'll tell you something. The day I die, there will be a few people that might be sad. There might even be a few more that actually are concerned about it. But make no mistake. A month or two after I'm gone... 90% of the people won't even think about me and what I've done, and they can easily erase anything I've ever spoken about, and the majority of people would forget about it like it never happened. But you know what? I know what I did, and they can't take that away. And that's all that matters to me. So if you are sitting there on the fence and saying, you know what? I want to help, but I don't know what to say, or I don't know what to do, or I'm afraid, or I'm not ready, you better get ready. Because when they're ready, you're done. And that's not fear, that's reality. Look at the police and how they're militarized now, where the average cop is walking around in full army gear, and how precincts get military equipment. This is not paranoia, this is fact. I want to spread love. I want to spread peace. But until we can get rid of evil people, peace is never going to happen. Because their idea of peace is through war. Look up the term peacemaker and see what you find. Because it won't look anything like peace. Their methods throughout history have been to maintain peace. We have to get the others before they get us. Instead of, how can we find a way to all benefit from this planet that was given to us? Instead of a few people saying, we own it, we are going to control it, who are you to tell us what we are going to do? And they're destroying this planet. And we're sitting here allowing it. So I speak my voice and people are going to hate me for that? Well, you know what? You make a better video than mine. You think I'm doing a crappy job? You show me how it's done. If you think that I can't do it right, you top it. It's easy to hate. I can easily make a hate video. But that requires no effort, no intelligence, and no bravery. Let's get it done. Are you tired of it yet? I know I am. Peace.